Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Now I got a short video for you guys this week. Haven't had a lot of shop time. It's cold out here. But I want to get back on this indexing angle plate. I've been putting it on the back burner for a while. And I think that it's time that I at least made some forward progress on it. And I need to mount my vernier scale or my pointer to this indexing angle plate. For those of you who aren't familiar with this, it is what the name says, an indexing angle plate. Most angle plates are like this. They're just a fixed cast iron 90 degree surface. You know, if you need to hold your work vertically, you would bolt your work to this and then bolt this to your work table and uh, do whatever operation you needed. But this one's a little different. And uh, that you can rotate this 360 degrees. You can bolt your work to the surface, clock it, whatever amount is needed, and lock it back down. And you can do that fairly accurately. Uh, we scribed 360 lines on this back bezel and uh, we made a vernier scale. We made this on video. This is just a PVC prototype and I need a way to mount it to the surface here. Well, on this casting it has a web in the center that would be a really good place if you asked me to mount it. But it's as cast. It's a rough surface. And I want to make it more accurate than that. I want this piece of bronze is what we will have in the end to have a solid base to mount to. And it's a 25 degree angle or really close to that. And I'm going to dial in this shaper to cut this angle to make it just a good, all we're trying to achieve is a good even flat surface. And there are several ways we can do that on this shaper. I'm going to bring in, we're going to discuss a couple ways, then I'm going to settle on one and we're going to cut it. All right. I've got this down to the bare casting. And this is the surface we want to cut. And right now it's just basically as cast. I just knocked the paint off of it with a file. And I want a good flat surface. A good flat surface that I can mount my uh, vernier scale to so it'll be secure. I don't want it to just have very little contact and set crooked or you know um, any of that. So we're going to machine this surface and I need to machine it to a 25 degree angle because that's basically what it is and that's what I built this prototype around. So there's a few ways that I could do that. I could mount this in the vise on a precision ground angle and cut it that way, but I don't think that would be a great way simply because I wouldn't be able to hold this piece properly. I could put this in the vise. I could loosen these two bolts on the compound and rotate it and then hand feed down and cut the angle that way. That would be satisfactory, but I'd still be left hand feeding. What I think I'm going to do is rotate the box 25 degrees and then use the machine's power feed. I think that'll give us the best finish and that'll be the most hands-off approach. I want to set this up pretty accurately, not because I need to, just because I want to. So I'm going to bring up, break out the sign bar and gauge blocks and I'm going to set this box up to as close to 25 degrees as I can get it uh, with the tools that I have. And I'm going to bring in and I'm going to show you that, uh, that process. And then we're going to cut this guy. Alright, first thing I'm going to do is rotate this box 25 degrees. And there's just a crank in here. I had to loosen these four bolts. And this handle. Now this now this vise is extremely heavy and uh, it's pretty tough to, to move back into position. So, but that's one good thing about the universal table is that it allows you to rotate the box and pivot the vise forward and back. So, pretty nice. So, I'm just lining these marks up by eye and I'm going to say that that's really close to 25 degrees. Get a little snug in there. And now, take this part out of the vise. And we're going to get us a different angle. Alright, we got our box rotated. And we got our blocks and our sign bar here. Now, this is a 4 inch sign bar. We have a 1.8 inch stack up front 
and in the back I have a hundred and ten thousandths. Now this one in the back is just to subtract from my stack that's a little too tall in the front. That's what I had to do in order to get as close to 25 degrees as I can get with blocks that I had, or at least the best that I knew to do. And the way that I got that uh, uh, angle, or the stack, is I just used the Suburban Tool Signbar app. Type in my length of signbar, or the distance between the two rolls. Typed in the angle that I wanted, which is 25 degrees. And then push Calculate. It gave me a required gauge block stack of 1.690473. Now I'm just throwing away the 473 and going with the 1690. So I have a 1.8 up front and then I had to add a 110 in the back. This one in the back subtracts from up front and that gives me pretty close to 25 degrees. And I bring down my indicator here and we're going to zero this in and we're going to zero it in basically just the same way that you've seen me rotate the box I'm just going to move this table back and forth watch the indicator I'll bring you in and let you see it and then we'll tap around on the handle it's kind of awkward because it's quite a distance from the indicator but uh, we'll tap it around till we get a basically a zero reading here and we'll call it good alright let's see what we got here just doing it by eye First, let's bring this down and zero it. Alright, now let's run across. That's pretty good. So, over three and a half inches, we're about seven thousandths off. Uh, that's pretty good really maybe eight thousandths so all I'm gonna do is tap around on that handle that you've seen me rotating the box with until I get basically zero and we'll call it good alright so I ran back and forth with my indicator and I'm within a half a thousandth over you know, three and a half inches, which is good enough for what we're doing. And I need to change my tool because um, I don't want to be. This piece here is gonna because we have the vice angled like we do. We're really close to the ways of the machine and whatnot. And, we, and I want to bring this down, this tool down a bit, without extending the compound way down. So. What I'm going to use is a tool holder. Now this is a zero rake tool holder, um, Armstrong. Um, I have several tool holders and these things really come in handy when you want to extend your reach but still maintain quite a bit of rigidity because these are really nice and, and rigid. And it will allow me to to work down a little farther and not uh, risk, you know, damaging the machine because it's easy to run one of these machines into itself if you're not careful. So we're just going to bring this over and get everything set up.
tape right there. You gotta tighten your vice on, Stan. Get in a hurry. Cause yourself big problems. Back off a bit.
manually. Right there. Well, we got it off the shaper and that turned out pretty nice. You know, all we wanted was a good flat surface to mount our, you know, scale to, and uh, we achieved that. I think uh, next thing will be figuring out a way to mount it to this uh, surface securely, and then we got to, you know, make the final product out of bronze, which is no big deal. You know, we've basically already done it with the prototype here, so I'm pretty happy with that. I think all in all, this is going to turn out really nice when I'm finished with it. A lot of work, but uh, but it'll be unique and uh, and pretty nice. You know, this will allow us to accurately index this angle plate within you know 360 degrees and within a quarter of a degree. So it should be pretty nice and pretty versatile. You know, I really appreciate you guys watching. You know, as most of you know, I'm no expert at any of this stuff, and I'm learning as I go. And I uh, really appreciate you guys in the comments and stuff, and all my old subscribers and all my new ones. So, thanks guys, I really appreciate it. If you haven't, make sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking on my little guy up here, and hit the bell for notifications. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. Or, this whole machine box, or machine table, rotates. And it has a scale on the front that'll tell you how you know much you've rotated it, and uh, you can do it that way. Oh God. Why am I making this so complicated?